for weapon sale. Mr. President, the first act engineered by the Western countries is the creation of the State of Israel by seizing Palestinian land and expelling 90% Arab population. Since then, wars have been fought in many countries, many related to the creation of the State of Israel. And now we have terrorism when there was none before, or at least none on the present scale. Military actions against acts of terrorism will not succeed. We need to identify the cause and remove it, but the great powers refuse to deal with the root cause. They prefer military action and sanctions, and they will continue to fail to stop terrorism. Malaysia accepts the state of Israel as a fait accompli, but it cannot accept the blatant seizure of Palestinian land by Israel for their settlements as well as the occupation of Jerusalem by Israel. The Palestinians cannot even enter the settlements built on their land. Because of the creation of Israel, there is now enmity towards the Muslims and Islam. Muslims are accused of terrorism, even if they did nothing. Muslim countries have been destabilized through the campaign for democracy and regime change. Muslims everywhere have been oppressed, expelled from their countries, and refused asylum. Thousands have died at sea and in the severe winters of Europe. One cannot deny that, it, that in the past there were no massive migration. Now the wars and instability due to regime change have forced them to run away from their countries. I will admit that democracy is a better form of government than dictatorship, but democracy is not the easiest form of government to operate. This is especially so when the adoption is overnight. Time should be al allowed for a gradual change to democracy. Indeed, the very countries which promote democracy because became democratic over a period of decades, if not centuries. The result of overnight switch to democracy is destabilization and civil wars, reducing some into governmentless wilderness. And some, of course, have reverted to authoritarian regimes worse than the one that was displaced. Unable to suffer from wars and violence, their people have to migrate. The great Democrats talk incessantly about the rule of law, but they are selective. Friends may, be, may break any law and get away scot-free. Thus, Israel can break, break all the international laws and norms of the world, and it will continue to be supported and defended. The unfriendly countries can do nothing right. There is no justice in this world. Mr. President, I must again refer to the fate of Rohingyas in Myanmar. Many colonies of the West Many colonies of the West, upon independence, expelled non-natives in their countries. But nowhere have they been as brutal as Myanmar. Even natives of the country were massacred, brutally killed, and raped in full view of the world, backgrounded by the burning houses and villages of the victims. They were forced to migrate, and now they dare not return to Myanmar, even when offered. They cannot 
thrust the Myanmar military under some form of Myanmar non-Myanmar protection is given. The helplessness of the world in stopping atrocities inflicted on the Rohingyas in Myanmar had reduced the regard for the resolutions of the United Nations. Now, despite UN resolution on Jammu and Kashmir, the country has been invaded and occupied. There may be reasons for this action, but it is still wrong. The problem must be solved by peaceful means. India should work with Pakistan to resolve this problem. Ignoring the UN would lead to other forms of disregard for the United Nations and the rule of law.